getting tired. I'm going to try to do some more Cold War. I'd like to go over the fundamentals of Vietnam in a few minutes here, and then maybe we can uh, kind of wrap it up. I don't know. Cold War is crazy, isn't it? But lots of vocab. i got to review a little bit. We've done like two lectures already on the Cold War, so make sure you get Yalta, the beginning of the chess game, Momo Marshall, Truman Plan, Bang Bang, Guns to Turkey and Greece. Make sure you get the concept of collective security, all for one and one for all. The gang concept of NATO and Warsaw Pact. Make sure you, under, make sure you understand why we don't have a nuclear attack. And one of those concepts is brinkmanship. Don't you do it. I will push that button. I will, you will push me over the brink. And mad, mutual assured destruction. You know, if you press the button, you might as well just shoot yourself after you press it. Which is why it never gets pressed. Circular logic. Um, moving on, we did Berlin airlift, right? Um, later, the building of the Berlin Wall. Um, we touched base a little bit on uh, the concept of Korea and Douglas MacArthur and 38th Parallel, civilian control over the military. We touched base on the Bay of Pigs, the failed invasion of Cuba, um, the resulting Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, the, the 13 days in October, which the world stood still, and Floridians got rid of their pools and dug bomb shelters and people prepared to die. And uh, we kind of narrowly escaped that crisis. And now we're ready to kind of talk about Vietnam a little bit. Um, Vietnam, another southeastern Asian country, very small country near Cambodia and Laos, um, is also like Korea into two spheres of influence. And this goes back into the 1950s. It's hard to say when the war, it's not a war, when the conflict started. But really, it's Dwight Eisenhower in the mid-50s that begins kind of making sure that South Vietnam has the military competence to stand on its own. Um, North Vietnam is communist influence. South Vietnam is, is American influence. And again, I'm not saying democratic influence because the government of South Vietnam isn't really a strong democracy. Um, we've shown you images in class of, uh, of, the, of the Buddhist monks did under Diem in the early 60s, burning themselves alive. I mean, you've got to be committed to burn yourself alive um, because they're Buddhists and he's Catholic. But nevertheless, um, the plan was Vietnam was going to unite. But again, because the people of Vietnam, I think partly because they were under colonization under the French, and here are the Americans telling them what to do again, um, they really saw Vietnam as the Viet Cong, which are the fighters in North Vietnam, begin to infiltrate South Vietnam to try to get people to become communists. And when America sees that this is kind of working a little bit, we, we have to, you know, say the word. You've got to contain that communism. So Eisenhower begun by sending advisors, military advisors, to give South Vietnam kind of advice about how to fend off the Viet Cong and this influence. And I mean, the leader of North Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh, was an admirer of America before all of this happened. Um, I don't think he was a, a capitalist, but he admired America. It wasn't that they were anti-American, they were anti, I think, and again, maybe I'm being a little biased and a little bit progressive and liberal here, but I think that they were nationalists, like Vietnam for Vietnam, um, who happened to kind of fall into the kind of red economic system of communism. But nevertheless, as the years go on, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, we're sending more and more advisors to Vietnam, and it's kind of making the news a little bit more, and, you know, what's going on in Vietnam? We have, you know, 20 advisors, 100 advisors, 1,000 advisors, and by the time JFK gets in there, there's a lot of pressure to kind of commit, commit troops to Vietnam to kind of stop this before it gets worse. Um, and a lot of historians argue about this, about whether JFK... New Frontier, you know, kind of the white Barack Obama of 1960, change and hope in the Peace Corps, and, you know, um, you know, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. You know, kind of this, you know, uh, you know, speak, good speech, and people are loving him. He's got a high popular rating. Um, whether he really thought that Vietnam was a good idea, and I've heard both sides. I've heard, uh, you know, Robert McNamara, who's assuring um, Secretary of Defense that, you know, JFK was pretty committed to going to Vietnam. And I've heard other voices, I don't know if it was Arthur Schlesinger or somebody who was discussing that in, in private, JFK, you know, I, I don't want to be, the, you know, the guy responsible for Vietnam. Because once you go there, how the hell do you get out? And before JFK could really commit to either way, November 22nd, 1963 occurred. And of course, we've talked about this in class and we've showed you imagery and we've talked about the Warren um, Commission and the Magic Bullet Theory and trying not to get too conspiratorial, but just presenting what we know about that day, um, JFK was assassinated. 
So in steps the vice president, Lyndon Baines Johnson. And we only have five minutes, so we're going to kind of go through vocabulary at this point. But remember, in World War II, we needed Pearl Harbor. Um, in order to invade Afghanistan and then retardedly, and, oh, I didn't say that, and then Iraq, we used 9-11. Um, we need crisis in order to really take action. So the crisis that we're going to talk about is the Gulf of Tonkin crisis of 1964. On my birthday, I think, August 4th. Not in 1964, I'm not that old. But the concept here is that um, we claim the North Vietnamese fired on the U.S. Maddox in the Gulf of Tonkin in, uh, in, in uh, open water, saying basically the communists attacked us, which gives us the right to do what? Yeah, punch back. And now, um, I've seen film and tape and I've heard the recordings where they perhaps fired and missed. Um, one of the times we said they fired, they didn't fire. It was a sonar um, bleep or something. But nevertheless, I don't, I don't know. I don't know anymore. We're gonna, we're, but that event is the catalyst for American military involvement hardcore. So LBJ, now we have kind of executive power idea here, is going to go to JFK like a cat on fire. They attacked us. We got to get them. You got to help. And rather than going through the formal process of declaring war and being deliberate and thinking about it and voting at it, they take the checkbook out and they basically write to the American president, LBJ, amount. You fill it in. That's called the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, the blank check of Vietnam. And that's what gives the president the power to send forces, to, to get the draft going with Congress's approval, but to, to basically commit itself to now, not a thousand military advisors, but 30,000 GIs, you know, 50,000 GIs, 500,000 GIs. And by the late 60s, there are half a million men in Vietnam, which is going to create protest movements back home. We only have three minutes, so I'm going to do the best I can with kind of concepts in Vietnam, thinking that, you know, this is a college course you could teach. But the idea is, and I think this goes to thesis, that you know, events don't disturb you. We said that you know what doesn't stink until it's where? In your backyard. I think satellite television and imagery of what happened in Vietnam, and we talked about this in class with Agent Orange and some of the massacres, I'm sure on both sides, but like my lie and seeing that imagery of the dead children and old ladies and people, knowing that GIs did that. Um, an instant transformation of that information onto your television set really lit a match under some of America. I'm not going to say all of America. Half the country, the silent majority, they're for the war. Domino theory, containment, you know, the ideas that we have to fight, patriotism. You know, my son died, um, you know, in that war. Damned if we're going to leave and my son died for nothing. Um, but they're countered by the counterculture. You know, the rise of the hippies and Woodstock and marches on Washington and civil rights and boycotts. Radical groups like the Weathermen, the underground Weathermen who bombed you know, um, military institutions. Um, I'm not sure looking to kill human beings, but people died. And, you know, people, Kent State, you know, protesters were shot at. Police brutality. Um, it was crazy. LBJ would hear as he went to bed, you know, on a nightly basis. Hey, hey, LBJ, how many babies did you kill today? And, you know, the, the country really becomes ripped in two. And one of the concepts is you really have a hard time winning a war when you don't have public support. We don't have public support here. We don't have public support there. We're dropping Agent Orange and children's skin is burning off. And, you know, we can, we can argue about this. We're, we're doing it maybe for the right reason. If you believe that, you're allowed to believe that. We're fighting communists. We're fighting for freedom. Whatever. But the, the pragmatic effect is they don't like us. And, you know, we killed a million, two million Vietnamese that died in that war. We lost 54,000, God bless their souls. We lost. And, and we lost because eventually we decided we couldn't win. Whether you believe that's because we were weak or the protest movement was right or it was smart to get out, that's what we're going to start to do. It's Richard Nixon who institutes the beginning of, we're going to do detente next lecture, the, the cooling off of the Cold War, but the process of Vietnamization which was basically turning the, 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 the fighting over to the South Vietnamese as we were like, here you go, good luck. Ah. And eventually, you know, they're going to have to stand on their own and they're not going to be able to. We're going to lose that war. Not before Richard Nixon goes a little farther. The, uh, 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 um, and the, 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 the Christmas bombings, I'm, I'm getting a little confused here, but he definitely expanded the war to Laos and Cambodia. He was bombing other countries as he was saying that he was pulling back. 
and later we'll talk about the Pentagon Papers and Watergate and some of that stuff, but that's basically, excuse me, <coughs> the concept of Vietnam. The idea and the lesson of Vietnam being, um, be careful before you commit American troops, and if you're going to do it, have a plan to get out and have support.